Good morning. This morning we're going to be talking about transmission adapter kits, the do's and don'ts and some little tricks that I use when I fit them, which will help you guys at home. And the two adapter kits that we have in front of us today are the Chevrolet to 606 adapter kit. I think this one's been around since 2017 and we used it for the uh, charger build that we took to the roadkill show. Um, this one fits TH350s, 400s, 480s, uh, 6L80s, um, quite a wide range. Now this is different to the BOP pattern. As you can see, this is a Chevy pattern. It's not for BOP. Yes, the dowels are in the same place, but it's not for BOP. This is for Chevy. If you don't know what BOP is, type in Pontiac BOP. It will become obvious. Um, and on my left here is a manual transmission adapter kit for a Toyota application, T100 V6 manual five speed. Uh, and I think that one's been around since 2020. We first did our Facebook posts about that one. So first of all, I'm gonna cover something that gets asked quite often, and that is the starter motor. So people say, how can I undo the starter motor whilst the transmission is installed on the adapter kit? And that's a very good question because normally if the bell housing is fitted, if the gearbox is fitted, it will be covering these two bolts and you can access them. And the main question that they ask is, how can I still fit the starter using the same size fittings? And that is a concern. So some, some guys use a smaller fitting from the back. We don't want to do that because we want the strength from these two M10s. It is an actual block fixing. So we want to use that. So I'm going to show you how I do it. So if we go over to this, this is actually a third little adapter um, that I've sneaked in. This is Land Rover application. So what we do is we turn the adapter plate using the dowels. So this has the dowels in and then you would bolt the adapter plate to the bell housing. Now this could be still, bell housing could be fitted to your gearbox, it makes no difference. Then take a drill, 10 mil, and drill straight through the two holes that would go to the starter motor. And when we drill straight through those two holes, that then gives us the perfect place to slide an Allen key through the hole to access those bolts to undo the starter. And the fantastic thing about that is, uh, the two small holes can be bunged with a plastic bung or you can leave them if you, if you don't choose to go massively underwater wading. Uh, but it allows us to retain them big M10 fixings, which are vital for keeping the strength in this hole assembly. It's starter motor clearance. So if like this Land Rover bell housing, uh, you have a, a notch here for the starter motor. You can see the starter motor nose sticks out slightly on the engine and that may well collide with this little bit of aluminium. So what we do is we take a marker pen. Obviously you might want to mark them if you were going to do, I'll mark these if I was going to drill those holes for the starter. So you mark here and here, and then you know, take this off with its dowels, and then you know where to make the cutout for the starter motor. Now I would then normally measure the amount the starter motor sticks out, and then I would draw on here with a pen where it needs to be cut out. Then, as simple as this, I use a hole saw this is actually a little bit big for the application, but I would use a slightly smaller one than this. And I simply rest the drill bit of the hole saw on the face of the bell housing, and then very slowly, well, very gently should I say, but at high speed, so this is spinning fast, I just go forward with that and just literally take that away. So what we end up with is a half moon that's quite neatly cut, you just finish it off with a file, and that clears the starter motor. Obviously, you could use the CNC machines, etc., etc. but I'm showing you a nice simple trick to do it at home without having to use a grinder and completely butcher it. This works actually really nice. So that is how I do the starter motors. Um, and to remove those two bolts, obviously, do a little bit at a time and the starter motor comes off. The bolt doesn't need to physically come out, remember. It's threaded into the starter, which can move away. Right, so that, that then leads me on to my next point. So the fixings that go all the way around the adapter plate that bolt the plate to the engine block, I like to use a little bit of copper slip in those because with the, uh, especially with the, um, the countersink fittings, they tend to tighten up 
and they're hard to undo. So a little bit of copper slip and that helps. Now the torque setting that I advise for that is 40 meters. It's an M6 Allen and literally just obviously using your torque wrench, 40 newton meters all the way around with a little bit of copper slip. Then I mark with a pen just to show the ones that I've done as I've gone round and that's like a nice double check. The copper slip also is going to help you if you ever need to take that starter motor off. I will say, however, the starter motors on 606s very rarely fail. That's because they're huge and they actually are designed to crank the engine over and over and over in the event of running out of diesel to prime diesel back up again when you refill the tank. There is no manual priming system on these cars. The starter motor is designed to run for minutes on end. So yes, it's a concern. No, I've never had to replace a starter in all the conversions and builds I've done. Anyway, but that's how you do it if you want to. <clears throat> Next thing. Flex plate, as you can see, this version with the Chevy adapter kit uses the factory flex plate. That is just the standard Mercedes flex plate that I've plated. Now, a couple of things to note here. Obviously, all your mating surfaces, whether it be the plate or the actual flex plate, need to be clean. But two very big differences between the outer plate and the spinning centre section. Now, these bolts must be loctited. So the outer ones, copper grease, yep. Inner ones, Loctited, you do not grease flywheel bolts. These flywheel bolts are the difference between having legs and no legs if this all goes pear shaped. So please, please apply some thread retainer. You don't need to use the mega red stuff, the blue stuff's fine. And before you put them in, a little bit of brake cleaner, airline, clean all that up, and then apply the bolts. The bolts for the crankshaft, 65 Newton meters. And that is the same torque spec for these factory flex plate versions or the ones that I supply in my kit with my flywheels. Right, so this, super important, covered it Loctite. Next up, so if we were going to install the Chevy adapter kit, what we get is this. Now this is a bell, I call it a bell adapter. And what it does is, using the magic of props and having lots of cars and lots of parts around me, I can show you. This is a Yank performance from Gearstar Transmissions in, in the USA. Uh, billet converter for a 4L80. This is my spare converter that I had in the charger. Now, what happens is, this is what you would see when you were looking at the front of your transmission. You'd have your bell housing around here and you'd see that. Now, obviously that, is not designed to mount to the Mercedes flex plate. So this is the go-between. This section bolts down. It has a spigot in the center to, to locate it. And this bolts down, straight down onto this. There we go. It centralizes, spigots down, straight down onto that torque converter, right? So that, that self-centralizes and you bolt this to the transmission. So this is all like this and then this bit is on the transmission. M2 bolts again around the perimeter, same torque spec. It's a spinning item again, so Loctite, right? A little bit of thread retainer. 40 Newton meters for those M10s, M10 caps that go around the outside. And you can see there's actually two bolt patterns there. You've got a smaller and a larger, and that's to suit the two different types of transmission, two different types of torque converter sizes. Uh, because obviously I think the 6L80 or 90 has a slightly different pattern. So that's why we've got two bolt patterns. So pick your pattern, bolt it on. Right, next up, what's going to happen is you're then going to introduce your transmission with that adapter bolted to the front to your 606 engine. Obviously, you'll have the dowels in. Now, note, with the dowels, the dowels are designed to be tight in the transmission bell housing, they are meant to have a little bit of free play in these. When I say a little, we're talking only a little bit. And that allows you to be able to install it, whether you're on a, you know, uh, an, an overhead lift or whether you're on a, a gearbox jack or whatever, you need to have a little bit of movement in these. So two dowels and they'll be mounted into your transmission. So you come to the engine and what you want to do is align these two uh, bolt holes, because you've got six bolts in your flex plate, 
align them with the hole in the back of your sump. This is probably super simple stuff to most of you guys out there, but make sure they're aligned. And then the same thing when you bring your transmission to it. And what's gonna happen is that plate is gonna come up to there and it's going to mount onto there like that. And then the bolts that are coming through, again, they're part of a rotating assembly. So what do we use on them? Loctite, not grease. Okay, so I think we're getting it now. So Loctite on there, the M8 bolts that go through the back of the flex plate and into there are 30 newton meters. And obviously, same again with the paint pen, mark them off as you rotate them round, D double check, double check everything, because like I stress to you guys, this stuff is dangerous. If you don't get this right, it can be dangerous and we don't want anything bad to happen, do we? we want this all nice and safe. So lock tight the spinny bits, grease the fixed bits. That's easy to remember, isn't it? Right, okay, so I think we've covered this one. Let's go round and have a look at a manual transmission adapter kit. So this manual transmission adapter kit is for a Toyota five-speed manual. Um, and we were commissioned to build this for a customer actually that sent the transmission in uh, and we did some research work. What we generally tend to do is we've got um, some touch probing in our CNC machines and what we do is we install the transmission and we take measurements from the transmission and then we measure all the throw out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then we can compile a kit. Now, one thing that you will never see with one of my kits is a flywheel a hub adapter. So again, talking about safety and from a perspective of not wanting to lose your legs with rotating assembly spinning at 6,000 RPM, what we do is we build a specific flywheel for a specific application. So this flywheel, for example, is for the Toyota adapter kit. Uh, and it has the standard Mercedes ring gear position and all the rest of it. And you simply fit this flywheel just like you would fit any other flywheel. You mount it on, same way as described, Loctite on the bolts, always Loctite. Remember, this is a spinning piece of spinning equipment. Um, mark them with the pen, 65 newton meters all around. And then that is good and safe. Now, because the reason I mention this is you often see kind of homemade adapter kits, I would say, or, you know, when people are on a tight budget or what have you, that people will try and use the flywheel from something else um, to save money and then put an adapter in between. The problem with that is the wheel bolts, as I mentioned, I'm going on about Loctite and I worked in the motor industry for a very long time. And it's surprising the amount of times I've seen loose flywheel bolts or issues. Now, if you have any kind of adapter between your flywheel and the engine, then you've just doubled the chance of that happening. And also you've doubled the machining margin of error. Everything else is compounded. To install an adapter between any kind of spinning component and the crankshaft, uh, I think is a very, very dangerous thing. Obviously, when you bolt the flex plate to the back of some flywheels, they are actually bolted together and they're sandwiched together and the bolts go straight through them and into the crank. That's okay. We're not actually changing a PCD. We're not actually mounting a piece on a piece. So to use an adapter between crank and flywheel, I don't condone it. I like my legs where they are and I don't want the bell housing exploding and a flywheel coming through the top. So solid flywheel, one piece straight onto the crankshaft, designed for the purpose, not a bodge, not cobbled together. Very important to mention that. So next up in this kit, we have the Sax Performance clutch cover. Now with some of our kits, we offer a slightly lesser uh, spring strength because these bad boys are 600 horsepower capable and we do a slightly lesser version, still Sax, but not the Sax race. It's just the regular Sax. And that's actually very good for street applications and things like that, up to sort of 350 horsepower. But if you're pushing the big horsepower, you're gonna have the strong clutch. Now that is uh, something that I'm gonna mention. When you have a strong clutch, obviously you're going to have a heavy clutch pedal. And as I've mentioned before, clutch boosters are very inexpensive and well worthwhile because then you really can have the best of both worlds, strong clutch and a light pedal. So some of the other bits we've got included in the kit, 
We've got the, the fixings for the flywheel. Now they are all rated. They are 10.9 fixings. So they're nice and strong. Uh, very, very well tested. Um, Loctite, as I've described, on the rotating parts. Also, what we have is the release bearing. So this is an old steel heavy duty release bearing and a sleeve which goes inside. And that sleeve obviously adapts it from this actually being our standard release bearing to one that fits perfectly on the Toyota shaft. And then you also get an all oil light center bearing. Now this is replaceable if it ever wears, uh, and that is a brass bronze oil light that goes into the center and it is retained by three bolts. The dowels are for the pressure plate to mount onto the flywheel. And then we also have the organic drive disc here with the heavy duty springs. Now, obviously this is for the Toyota application. There are many other versions, but they all have similarities. So another thing to mention just before we, we, before we end this, when it comes to fitment, if you're fitting an adapter kit for the first time, um, or a custom clutch system for the first time, the clutch bleeding side of things and getting the adjustment right on that sometimes takes a little bit of fiddling around. And as I've mentioned before in my past videos, if you go right back to one of my older adapter videos, it's always good to see where the clutch fingers lie when the whole assembly is bolted to the engine versus the position of the bearing pushed right back in your gearbox. Because if you've got a great big difference there, and you may, let's say you've got a 20 mil difference when that bearing's right back to there and the bearing sat up here, and your clutch system, your hydraulic system can only swing 20 mil, well, it's not even gonna push the clutch. So it's always worth having a measure up of that first. I take this into consideration when I build the adapter kits for you guys. So I make sure you have the right thickness bearing, this stack height is all correct but there's still sometimes a little bit of adjustment that you need to consider, and it's better to do it before you install the gearbox. And you can see actually on this Land Rover bell housing here, this one has a screw in stud. So the, the arm, the actual pivot arm that would work on this, you would be able to raise or lower the pivot arm by perhaps adjusting the stud. And with a lot of my kits, like the, uh, I think the CD009 and a, a few other versions, they actually come with a different length stud. The Patrol, for example, that one does. Uh, but even with the Patrol, with the different length stud, you still have to make a slight adjustment to the, um, the mechanism on the back of the pedal to allow for that distance. Because at the end of the day, what we're connecting is a very custom setup to something that it was never meant to be in. Um, and that is why we're having to make those small adjustments, but it's well worth it. The Sax Racing cover and the Sax clutches are absolutely awesome. They are made best in the business and we use them in every single one of our kits. It's a very nice, simple design, but super strong, absolutely awesome. So I hope that's helped. And I hope by the time this video comes out that you guys can still benefit from free shipping because we were doing a nice little offer um, on free shipping because the adapter kits are great and they allow people to be able to build the builds. So we offer free shipping on those uh, or we have done a special offer with free shipping. So if you're lucky, that might be still on. Um, if not, drop us a message. We might be able to sort something out. Actually don't, we'll probably end up with a load of messages about that. I'm gonna give you a few things to remember from this video. This is very important, right? Remember this. These are the wise words of Luke Dale. Lock tight on the spinny things. Anti-seize, copper grease, on the fixed things. No adapters between flywheel and crankshaft because your legs are best on your body. Bye for now.